It's ultra time! 2017 has already been a better running year for me than 2016, with personal bests on the 10k and the half marathon. But this would be the first big challenge. The Hart Squeal, literally crossing of the Hartz, which is Northern Germany's attempt at the mountain range. Though the highest point of the 50 km long race was only 600 meters above sea level, in total there were more than 1,300 meters of ascent waiting for me. After starting on a nondescript road just outside the town of Wernigerode, the route soon disappeared into the endless forests of the Harz. The first five kilometers were almost completely uphill. A pack of hundreds of runners slowly snaking through the woods. A reservoir marked the altitude around which the route would oscillate for the next 25 kilometers. Around 10 kilometers in, I settled into the rhythm. The pack of runners became less dense, making it easier to run at my own pace. There was the first aid station, and we started overtaking some of the slower participants in the hiking category. Overtaking is always nice, even if there's no competition whatsoever. I really shouldn't go for the terrible pun here, but I was feeling pretty good at this point, so yeah, something about running like a train. In the second half, the trails got more interesting. Usually not too technical to slow me down, but certainly more varied and challenging. At some points, it actually seemed useful that I have a little bit of alpine running experience. I had set myself an optimistic goal of five hours. Halfway through, it seemed that I was a few minutes behind schedule to make that time. But when passing the third aid station, I noticed a discrepancy between the route description and my GPS. The station was supposed to be at kilometer 31, but my watch only indicated 29. With those two free kilometers, finishing within five hours seemed feasible again. After that aid station came a long and gentle descent. The trail was nice and smooth, and it allowed me to fly down the hillside. Maybe my long legs have something to do with it, but I seem to have a superpower when it comes to downhill running. As if gravity works harder on me than on anyone else. Encouraged by the possibility of making five hours, and by the wonderful descent itself, I kept a good pace when I arrived in the valley. But I knew it wouldn't last long. See that hill straight ahead? That's where we're going. The Poppenberg is the crux of the Hartzquerl. The ascent is comparable with the one in the beginning, but almost 40 kilometers in, it is much more menacing. On the bright side, it was the last big climb, so I knew I could afford to spend a lot of energy there. But not all of it, because after the summit of the Poppenberg, there were still 12 kilometers to be covered. And as I noticed on the flatter parts of the ascent, those which you could actually run, my technique was already suffering from the effort. Apparently, I wasn't the only one with that problem. After the Poppenberg, the course would be mostly downhill. But if your muscles are completely shot, descents are no longer recovery phases and become risky undertakings making it all the more important to save some strength for later. I made it to the top in reasonable shape. As expected, I had lost my descending superpower, but I still managed to match the downhill pace of the runners around me. Descending from the Poppenberg, I was effectively leaving the hearts behind. I got the alive feeling. I don't mean feeling alive, which I also did. No, I'm talking about the 1993 movie Alive. Not that running an ultra is comparable in any way to surviving a plane crash in the middle of the Andes and having to resort to cannibalism to survive. But towards the end of the film, as two of the survivors set out on what turned to be a nine-day expedition to find help, a true story, by the way, there is a montage of changing landscapes and vegetation 
as the survivors find their way down to lower altitudes. Descending the pop and back felt like this montage. The forests gave way to meadows, the dirt turned into gravel, then asphalt, even the air seemed to change. But arriving in the valley wasn't the end of the story. The archery past thunder had nothing to do with the finish line. There were still eight more kilometers left. And you didn't expect those to be flat, did you? The hills were much smaller than before, but by now I felt every centimeter of ascent and every puff of headwind. So much for feeling alive. Thanks to the open landscape, this part of the course provided some of the best views, but that did nothing to keep my spirits up. Little more successful were the more frequent aid stations and unusual spectators. There was only one thing that would make my mood swing back to positive, knowing I had the last ascent behind me. To celebrate this mood swing, the flat top of this last hill came with an honor guard of trees lining the trail. And then the town of Nordhausen, host to the finish line, came into view. The uneven ground was torture for my exhausted muscles, but endurance lies between the ears, and now I could smell the finish line. As it turned out, I lost too much of my pace in this last part to finish in under five hours. Maybe I should have saved more energy when climbing the Poppenberg. Who knows? And who cares? My main goal never was the time. It was to finish knowing I gave it all I had. Mission accomplished. <laughs>